my inner preteen is is rejoicing. <laughs> Well, hello there, and welcome to a very unnecessarily widescreen format version of my of my YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, this week's episode is is shot anamorphically uh, for, for no apparent reason, other than I'm a nerd and I geek out over camera gear. So new toy for my, my camera today and I, I wanted to take it for, for a little test run. But this is not this is not a tech channel. This is a channel where I come to you every week and sit down and chat about what I'm knitting on, what I'm quilting on, or whatever, whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down. So yes, yeah, so this is indeed a, a crafting YouTube channel. If you came for, t for tech, you are not in the right place. If you came here for knitting or quilting, you are indeed in the correct place. So stay put, grab a cup of something, and let's get into the nitty gritty of the of the episode. Um, but first, I do wanna mention that I may need to take a little break, a little hiatus uh, in the coming weeks, just because this month is is a little, a little crazy. I'm not gonna lie. We've got a lot going on uh, between, again, they're starting work on our roof starting tomorrow, and then, got some family stuff coming up and then we're gonna try and get away for vacation. It's it's gonna be nutso. So uh, just a little heads up that I may be taking a break, maybe one, maybe two weeks, I don't know. Uh, I will I will definitely keep you posted. But in the meantime, I will do my best to sprinkle in some uh, bonus content, some vlogs, just to make up for the void, <laughs> the void that you may notice in your, in your, uh, your YouTube feed. I don't Whatever. <laughs> Am I making any sense? I have no idea. But anyway, I've had clearly way too much coffee as per usual, so why not just have another sip? And let's talk uh, elephants in the room. My lovely assistant, Marga the Mannequin, is wearing yet another one of my knitting patterns that I designed. <laughs> and by the way, I just wanna say thank you so much to everybody who uh, jumped in on the, the discount code for my Vildesmere shawl. Uh, truly, thank you so much. I got such a great response. This week, I'm gonna be doing another discount for my Cal and My shawl, which, which Marga the Mannequin is wearing. Uh, and while this is another one of my designs, it is not my hand-dyed yarn. Uh, this yarn is actually hand dyed by one of my dear friends, Gabby, of the Plies and Hellhounds uh, Yarn Company and and YouTube channel. Uh, she was formerly Once Upon a Corgi, but a couple years ago she changed her her company name to Plies and Hellhounds, which I I think is pretty brilliant. I love it. Her yarn has very dark academia vibes, very bookish, very, very dark and goth as well. If that's what you're drawn to, definitely check out her shop. This colorway right here is her Hearth colorway, which is, I don't know, it's one of my favorite colorways that she dyes. It's just like this very, I wanna say burnt umber, but like has cool undertones, pops of blue in it. Uh, I can't really describe it other than it's like a, a very dark moody brick red. I think if, in a nutshell, that's how I would describe it. And I knit this holding two strands together. Uh, one of her, I'm blanking on her base names, but one is a mohair lace and the other is a Pulworth silk blend, I'm blinking on it, but I will pop all this information in the down bar, but do check out her shop. Uh, really beautiful, beautiful work. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm trying to think what else I wanna say about this other than, yeah, it's it's a cowl. <laughs> so it's knit in the round and there's a very simple uh, cable motif involved. Uh, and just like my Vildesmere shawl, I incorporated beads. I cannot stay away from the beads, my friends. I love incorporating beads into designs, into, projects, uh, you know, not only does it add sparkle, but what I really love about knitting with beads is that they make for a great design element substitute. Let's say you're knitting a pattern and it calls for baubles, and for some reason, you know, you're just not feeling the baubles, baubles aren't your thing. Uh, you know, I, I personally love a good bauble, they have their place, but there are certain patterns where I'm just like, yeah, not feeling it. Instead of baubles, we're using beads. Uh, and I did that with my uh, Birkin, sweater that uh, was designed by Caitlin Hunter. So that pattern, the, the yoke, called for some baubles and color work, wasn't feeling the baubles, threw in some beads instead, and I absolutely love the way that it turned out. Little tip for you there, if, if that's something that you're thinking about. Uh, so yeah, same thing as last week, uh, let's do another discount, 20% off. I'll pop a code in the down bar here if you wanna hop over to my Ravelry shop or my uh, website, villainvineyarns.com, you can get 20% off uh, this pattern, the Cal and My Cowl, 
uh, and the hat because I did make a, a matching hat version to go along with it. So thank you so much in advance and I hope you enjoy knitting it as much as I enjoyed designing it. Uh, I think there was, was there something else that I wanted to say about it other than, oh yeah, Cal and Mai. It's called Cal and Mai uh, because I am, I am obsessed with the book series, A Court of Thorns and Roses. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's by Sarah J Mass. I won't regale you with the whole story here or give any spoilers, but it's an, it's, uh, it's an event that happens within, within the series. So I, I named my cowl pattern after it. So anyway, uh, yeah. All right, that concludes the segment of Elephants in the Room. As for works in progress, uh, I have made quite a bit of progress on my Miss May M. Cal by Helen Stewart. Thankfully, thankfully no no new cast-ons. I'm trying to be good, trying to be really good here, guys. Uh, I, have, I have way too much stuff on the needles and I, I really need to get things off. Um, because there's still, there's still some new and Chinese that are calling out to me and I'm just like, no, no, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that this week. <sighs> anyway, I digress. Let's talk progress on my Miss May M. Cal shawl. And uh, in case you're wondering, this is a mystery knit along. So I'm gonna pop a time code, a timestamp in the down bar for you to skip ahead if you do not want any spoilers. And three, two, one, are we good? All right, we're gonna see some spoilers now. And of course, I'm, I'm mid-row. Mid-row. <laughs> why, why don't I ever finish my rows before I know I'm going to record? Anyway, uh, so yes, we are almost done with Clue 2. And I believe she released Clue 4 yesterday. So definitely behind schedule, but at the same time, I'm making, making very swift and steady progress. Not slow, but swift, because my friends, this pattern, it's just, it's such a breezy knit. I mean, all, as I say every week, every time I knit a, a Helen Stewart pattern, all of her patterns are just so breezy, intuitive, relaxing, meditative, all of those adjectives rolled up into one. And yeah, it's just, it's like I'm just on a ride. It's like I'm just riding down the river with this pattern, if I could describe it as such. Uh, yeah, it's just so great. Uh, so just to regale you with the yarn, uh, this is uh, my hand dyed yarns, wool and vine yarns uh, in my jilted rose colorway up here. And then we move along to dirty on purpose. And then we have wool and vine number nine and seven year stitch. And I know it looks like a crumpled mess right now, but that, that is the nature of lace. Once this blocks out, you're gonna be able to see all the stitch definition and all its glory, and I, I cannot wait for that uh, that moment. Uh, although although I don't want it to end too fast because I am enjoying I am enjoying the knit. But yeah, the yarn is all, oh, it's also on my footsie base, which is a fingering weight, uh, blue face luster nylon blend. So not as next to skin as my Nouveau base, which is a single ply uh, merino, or my uh, merino nylon cashmere blend Volca, uh, but you know, while it is a little, it has a little bit of texture to it, a little bit of tooth, but at the same time, it's it's still soft. Um, and with the nylon content, I know it's gonna hold up to a lot of wear and tear, and it's it's a sturdy yarn, hence why I call it my sock base yarn because it can hold up to a lot of wear and tear. But at the same time, sock yarn, not just for socks, you can knit whatever you want with it. The other thing that I wanna mention is that I'm using uh, good old Clover US size six, four millimeter needles. Uh, while I love the way, th these are good go-to tried and true needles. I have no problem with them, but I will say uh, for certain stitches within this pattern, I wish I had a sharper point, especially, uh, I don't know if you're knitting along with this, but there is there are two, no, I want to say uh, two sections in here of two rows of, I want to say like these crisscross stitches, they kind of make like a little X and O motif. And the way that you execute these stitches is you have to go under one of the stitch towards the back and you know, it, it, anyway, it's a little, it's a little tiny maneuver that you have to do, simple to execute, but I wish I had, I wish these needles were just a smidge, a smidge pointier and <laughs> I have, I have a pair of high high sharps lying around here somewhere. I just don't know where they went off to. So it's just for those two rows. So it's not, you know, worth switching out the needles for. Uh, if anything, it just, it just slows down my progress a little bit, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not complaining, honestly. Um, and I did, I did mess up on the direction of some of those stitches, but anyway, not worth ripping back for. All right, quick, quick coffee break. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, I think I just splashed myself in the face. Okay, oh, good times. Uh, anyway, I'm drinking out of my Friedrich mug this morning, or afternoon, I should say. It's about it's about 12 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm actually re-recording this because 
my microphone. I didn't have it turned on the first time around. Oh, rookie, rookie mistakes, rookie mistakes. Um, I'm a professional. I went to film school. <laughs> um, anyway, moving along, I did pull another pattern out of hibernation. I pulled it out because yesterday I met up with Katie of Katie Did Bags, who if you're not familiar, she makes truly, truly beautiful, incredibly well-made project bags. I've waxed poetic about them here on this channel recently. And last weekend, she invited me to a, a trunk show that she was doing. And while I really, really wanted to go, I, the planets were not aligning time-wise. And anyway, I couldn't make it, uh, but I still wanted to show my support. So I hopped onto her Etsy shop and bought a, a project bag that was sitting in my cart for quite some time, finally pulled the trigger and, here it is. Here it is. It's, can we take a moment? I mean, everything about this print has my name all over it. And then I love the fact that she has like a faux leather bottom and a faux leather handle on it. Uh, just seriously, guys, all of, her, all of her project bags are just so incredibly well made. But anyway, long story short, she doesn't live too far away from me. So she messaged me after I purchased her bag and she goes, you know what, why don't I just meet up with you and I can give you the bag in person. And I thought, Brilliant, let's let's do it. It'll give us an excuse to meet up because we've been wanting to hang out again. And yeah, so yesterday we met up and we had the best day. Uh, you know, she came over with her, her two daughters who were, oh my gosh, Katie, your daughters are the sweetest little munchkins I have ever had the pleasure of spending the day with. <laughs> You're so cute. Um, but yeah, we, we went to a place called Todd's Point in Greenwich, Connecticut, uh, hung out there for a good part of the day, just, you know, walking around, knitting, chatting, and yeah, it was such a nice and welcome break from my, my daily routine. And yeah, it just so great getting to hang out with Katie and, and the like, but um, yeah, she, you know, had my project bag and then she also included, which she truly didn't have to do, but she she included a, a Notions pouch that matches, super cute. And then also, because we did we did a yarn swap, um, she gifted me this equally adorable and very apropos roller skating bag. I mean, how stinking adorable are these roller skates? Come on, I love this. And by the way, I need to get back into roller skating. I've just had so much stuff going on and I still need to figure out or find find a decent place for me to practice roller skating because while I can do it in the house, it's I don't want to skate in the house and you know our our driveway it's not the safest so I need to I need to scope out the area and find a nice smooth flat surface for me to practice my roller skating again. Um, but anyway, if this isn't motivation, I don't know what is. But uh, one thing that I truly love about Katie's bags is that she includes pockets. Is. So let's take a look. Um, there's her logo, but then if you can see, it's, it's black fabric, so I don't know how well, how visible it is, but um, I'll show you in this one. Um, this is actually housing my Fiola, which we will talk about in a hot minute. But here I already have my pattern folded into one of the, the pockets. And then in the other one, I've just been keeping the other needle size that I need to switch to and a measuring tape. It, it's perfect. It's a design element that's not rocket science, but yet so effective. I mean, it's the little things, my friends. Am I right? Katie. Thank you, thank you so much for this gorgeousness. Uh, and she also is generously offering a discount code. Now through the end of July, she's going to be offering 10% off her project bags in her Etsy shop. Uh, and I'll pop the code down here. Katie, thank you so very much. And I should mention that Katie only has a very limited supply of this uh, fabric left in stock. So if you do want this project bag, you have to jump on it ASAP because yeah, supplies are limited. She makes these bags to order, uh, which I, I was very, very surprised. Uh, I had no idea. I thought she just had these in her, in her shop ready to go, but no, she gets the orders in and these bags are made to order, which I think is brilliant. But I just want to put that in there and she is having an update this Friday. Uh, by the time you're watching this, it's probably either Friday or Saturday. So you know, go check out her, her Etsy shop. And again, you can get 10% off your order. Moving along to my Fiola, a pattern by Isabel Kramer. Uh, I'm still, still on Body Island, but I'm just about done and ready to start the ribbing on the bottom. So I'm gonna stand up so you can see how, how far it is. Uh, yeah, and I kind of want this to be a bit of a crop sweater. I want it to be no longer than over here. So just 
past my, my waistline over here. I feel like crop sweaters suit my style a lot better than longer ones because I already have a long torso and for the most part I wear a lot of skirts and dresses so I feel like the crop sweater look looks better over a skirt or a dress. And um, so that's what I'm going for with this pattern. And I decided to cast this on because I'm joining in on the Dingley Dell Knit Along hosted by uh, Jana and Kim of the Knit Together with Kim and Jana YouTube channel. Uh, and they are doing this in collaboration with Mayak Fibers and Isabel Kramer who, who designed the sweater. Um, and the yarn of course is Mayak Fibers. I'm using 100% yak lace in their mustard colorway. Can we just, yeah, this color, love it, love it so much. Don't tell Mauve, but <laughs> I do truly love this shade of like golden brown. It's, oh yeah, it's everything, it's everything. But yes, I'm holding two strands of Mayak lace together so it creates, I wanna say like a fingering weight or DK weight, definitely fingering weight, but um, yeah, it's, the yarn itself is beautiful, it's soft, it's just, oh, buttered kittens to the max. I have a funny feeling this is going to be flying off my needles relatively quickly. The, the knit along goes until March 31st, so I still have time, but at the same time, I really enjoy working on this pattern. It's just, again, it, it's zooming. As complicated as it looks, it's, again, this lace motif that uh, Isabel Kramer incorporates along the sleeves, very intuitive, easy to memorize, and, you know, it just, again, Brilliant pattern, brilliant construction, brilliant pattern, loving every stitch. <laughs> I should put that on an enamel pin, loving every stitch. Um, that's another thing that I, I wanna work on for this YouTube channel. I wanna work on merch. I feel like I need some enamel pins. We need some coffee mugs. Uh, let me know in the comments below, uh, if I were to have merch for this for this here YouTube channel, what would you wanna see on, a, on an enamel pin, on a mug? or a t-shirt or something. I think it would be a lot of fun. Let me know, I'm, I'm very curious. Um, so that, that my friends, is all the knitting content that I have to share with you. Uh, but I do have, so, as, as I promised last week, I do have a finished quilt top to share with you. All right, Baby Kisses quilt. We have a finished quilt top, my friends. Uh, and yeah, let me, let me stand up so you can see this in all its glory. I added the border. <laughs> So yeah, this turned out to be so much bigger than I anticipated. You are so not gonna be able to see, uh, you know, the full magnitude of this. It is a 51 by 51 inch square. According to the pattern, this is supposed to be a, a crib size quilt, a baby size quilt, but you know, looking at it, a, a grown ass adult can certainly sit <laughs> on this and, you know, use it as, as a throw. It's quite big. And also, I know these colors are crazy and way out of my comfort zone, but it's really growing on me. I mean, it reminds me of like a stained glass window. It's just so, so pretty. The next step is to actually quilt it. So make my quilt sandwich and then machine quilt, do all the squiggle designs on top. Uh, however, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm actually debating whether or not I actually wanna quilt this myself or send it out because yeah, I'm. it's already a very busy pattern and I'm not quite sure what design I would go with. So my idea is to send it out to a long armor, have them use their good judgment on you know what motif to use to, to quilt this. I'm assuming something very simple, basic, nothing, nothing too busy because I don't think we wanna add any more busyness to them, but you know, to, to send it out, have a long armor do it, use their good judgment, get it back and see and study their technique. So, you know, in the future, should I create another pattern like this or, you know, another quilt like this, I'll know what to do in the future. <laughs> if I want to tackle it myself. And the other and the other tempting factor is that Missouri Star is having a sale on machine quilting. Not sponsored, but you know, I'm I'm very, very tempted to send this out. Um but yeah, anyway, I do have the batting. So I have the batting, I have the I have the backing. This is going to be my my choice for the backing. Again, this fabric is by uh, Anna Maria Horner. It's her love always fabric collection line and yeah, it's, it's just so fun. Like seriously, my, my inner preteen is, is rejoicing because it's so crazy, colorful and fun. And it really does remind me of Lisa Frank cartoons. I don't know if you're familiar with, with Lisa Frank, but in the eighties the and the nineties, she was very, very popular. You'd be hard pressed to find a teenager without a Lisa Frank Trapper Keeper or some kind of sticker book. With 
<laughs> with, with multicolored unicorns, baby seals, and dolphins plastered all over them. Anyway, I digress, but yeah, the, these prints are just making me so happy. And I'm very, very happy with my border choice. I feel like it lends really nicely to the rest of the quilt without being too distracting because yeah, we, it's, it's busy, let's be honest. So while this project made me very happy, I was happy to get out of my comfort zone, I'm ready to return to <laughs> some more subdued, uh, you know, prints and colors uh, that are, you know, more appealing to me, more versatile that I can actually decorate with and, you know, that will complement the decor in my house. Um, but anyway, you get the idea. Believe it or not, I did start on a new quilt project a few weeks ago and I shared it with, I've been sharing it with uh, members of this YouTube channel and I've been making a lot of progress on it, my friends. Uh, this is another pattern by the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Again, I am not sponsored by the Missouri Star Quilt Company. I just fall down, I, I, I've just fallen down their rabbit hole. They put stuff out and I'm I'm just like a magpie or what is it, a moth to a flame. They come out with a new pattern and I'm all over it. I'm just like, I want to make that. Um, but yeah, I stumbled on one of their quilt patterns. It's called the Winter Star. And I had also purchased some uh, layer cakes from, from their shop that I thought would lend beautifully to this pattern. And yeah, a peak, you know, if, if, you, if you've been following this channel, you know that I am kind of on a peacock print kick or a peacock color kick. And when I stumbled upon this layer cake, I was just like, yeah, it's, it's coming home to me. So yeah, can we, can we talk about, yeah, it's a little, again, well, it's not crazy colors. It's, it's definitely a little garish. It's a little loud with the metallic happening, but I mean, the irises, my favorite, my favorite flower to date. It's just irises, irises, peacock feathers, um, metallic, purples, teals. There's blue in here. There's blue. I think, you know, by now we know that Kristen, it doesn't really gravitate towards blues, but blue definitely has its place in this palette here. So, uh, blue combined with teals and purples and, you know, it just, the whole, Thing just blends together and makes my heart sing. So I got a layer cake of this and then the contrasting fabric that I'm going to be using is this glorious cream and gold metallic grunge fabric. I am such a huge fan of like textured solids, if that makes any sense. Compared to pure solids, I just feel like that they add so much texture and interest and dimension to um, you know, a, a quilt. I don't know. I just love the way it plays together. And case in point, um, this, this pattern in particular calls for three different blocks. So you have to make three different types of blocks for this quilt. Um, so far I've made, I've made two of the three. Uh, one is this one right here. So this is going to be the center of the star. Here's another one in blue. Here's another one in blue. And then, yeah, you get the idea. So, you know, I've made all of those quilt blocks and then I've made the four patches, which are over here. So, and the four patches are super easy to make as well. I think I made about 60, 62 of these little nuggets, whatever you want to call them, squares, four patches. Um, yeah, so made all of those, as many as I need to make. And now I have to make um, what looks to be the hardest block to make in the quilt. But after watching the tutorial, like uh, that's what I love about Missouri Star Quilt Company. They do tutorials for all of their quilt patterns. And after watching uh, Jenny put this whole quilt together, it seems very, very doable, very easy. Um, but I saved it for last because, you know, like true to form, I saved, I've saved the hardest thing for last. So that's, that's what's coming up next. And I'm probably going to do a little mini vlog for members on how I put that quilt block together or see how it goes. So if you are interested in seeing that uh, and want to support this channel, uh, please, please do consider becoming a member of this channel. Uh, and you can do so by clicking the join button right below this video or on the main page or the home page of my YouTube channel. Um, and as I say every week for a fancy schmancy monthly cup of coffee, if you join the a cup of something and higher tier, you can enjoy a weekly bonus vlog from yours truly with a couple of other uh, bonus content sprinkled in here and there. And you'll also get an invite to our private Facebook group where we have a very fun, very inspiring uh, <laughs> granny square crochet along. Well, no, it's not limited to crochet. It's actually a make along. So if you want to 
uh, you know, crochet a granny square, if you want to knit a granny square, if you want to sew a granny square, you know, get creative. Uh, all crafts are welcome. It's just a really wonderful place for members of this channel to come together, chat, connect, and share. Share what we're making. And yeah, we're, we're also doing giveaway prizes. So uh, do check that out and I hope to see you over there. But yeah, I, I am I am hoping to do a little, a little vlog showing how I do this <laughs> how I tackle this uh, this quilt block that um, is going to be a new to me technique. But if you're new to quilting, hopefully hopefully a vlog like that will show you how how doable all of this stuff is and and you know how manageable it is. Not all techniques are easy. I will say that. Like my my double wedding ring quilt, it like I know how to do it, but it is a labor of love. It's it definitely takes a lot of time, patience, and energy just to like sit there and make one full block. This project in particular is proving to be very, very smooth sailing, easy going, and I'm enjoying it thoroughly. Um, and I think I think it also helps to really love the fabric that you're using. I mean, this fabric. It call me crazy, call me crazy. I cannot get enough of this peacock fabric. It just, it just makes me so happy. Um, so anyway, all right, my friends. I think I'm gonna end things there. Uh, thank you so much as always for hanging out with me. Uh, as I mentioned, I may have to take a little bit of a hiatus, so just a little heads up. But for the most part, I am putting out videos to your viewing pleasure every week. So if you haven't already, consider liking and subscribing. And yeah, have, have an amazing weekend. Happy 4th of July to those in the United States. <laughs> if you have the weekend off, here's wishing you a, a happy, relaxing, and safe holiday. Uh, and until the next video, I will see you next time. Happy making. Bye.